After the end of the American Civil War, there were three trails established from Texas to the railheads and markets to the north. The three trails that came into being were the Chisholm Trail, the Goodnight Loving Trail, and the Great Western Trail. A typical drive of 3,500 head of cattle, it required about 15 cowboys. Also needed was a cook and his chuck wagon and a horse, wrang horse wrangler who was responsible for the Ramuda. The Ramuda was a herd of tame riding horses which the cowboys chose to use. Many horses were required because the cattle drive was a long distance affair over rivers and ever challenging terrain. Drive which could take anywhere from several weeks to several months, depending on trail and destination, could be boring for long stretches at a time, with nothing to see but flatland, dust, and the bony hide ends of the cattle. Just to illustrate how boring the drive gets, here's a quick diary kept by a cowboy named George Duffield. Go something like this. May 1st, best campee, last 200 head of cattle. May 2nd, spent the day hunt and found but 25 head. It has been raining for three days. May 9th, still dark and gloomy. River up, otherwise everything looks blue to me. The trip would be tough, without showers and clean clothing, without clean water for long periods of time, and every meal consisted of baked beans. Most account of old western cowboys on cattle drives say very little about relaxing. The most they got was some poker near the campfire at night. While on the trail, it was rather nerve-wracking and more dangerous. Two constant threats were weather and natives. Since the natives did not follow the code of the West, they became a huge issue when they would raid the cowboys and steal cattle. Most desperados and fast pistol men appeared to have behaved themselves around cattle and cowboys, and several, including Wild Bunch member Harry Alonzo, were fine hands. All of this torture must pay well, right? Well, depending on the length of the drive, a cowboy might have 80 or $90 in his pocket when paid which isn't as much as you think for months of hard work. There were many saloons and gambling halls and apparently even served Russian caviar. These establishments were more than willing to relieve the young cowboy of his newfound wealth. But other than that, it was pretty depressing, as many of the women who sold their favors to these cowboys had one form of venereal disease or another, and this leads to many cowboys to suffer in pain for weeks. Yet, despite the danger, the discomfort and monotony, the slow pace and recalcitrant cows, there was no lack of boys and young men eager to sign on or make their mark for what they envisioned as the adventure of a lifetime. As old-time Wadi J.R. Humphreys of Yoakum, Texas recalled, In my earliest boyhood days, the great ruling ambition was to become a cowboy.